Welcome to the studio. We got a packed show for you, so stay tuned. Sports Talk Live is next. Welcome to Sports Talk Live. I'm Colin Malliott, sitting here with John Dorton and Joey Olson. We had a crazy, crazy week in sports, and just what are your thoughts on the matter, guys? Well, it all started on Wednesday afternoon when it was game five of the ALDS, a winner take all. Russell Martin throws the ball back to the pitcher, and well, what happened was the ball hit the hit a bat, which just caused a run to score. People in Toronto are throwing stuff on the field where the, the game was delayed about 30 minutes. And later in that half inning, it was the seventh inning, Jose Bautista hits a three-run home run to take take the lead at six to three. And Twitter just went crazy, saying that was probably the craziest inning that ever happened in playoff baseball. And that's really saying a lot. And then we move on to going on into the weekend on Saturday. There was probably the craziest play that we'll talk about a little bit later that happened. And just everything is going on right now. There's four sports that you could watch even starting on Thursday. There's football, preseason basketball even, which starts next Tuesday, baseball, and what, what, can, what can you watch? What's your favorite thing about, about sports right now? Well, Right now, for me, it would probably have to be over across the pond in the Premier League as well as in the Bundesliga over uh, in soccer. Uh, right now, all of the like the the whole table is mixed up in the Premier League. We'll talk about that a little later, as well as in uh, La Liga and the Bundesliga. But right now, it's just chaos over there as well as here. Yeah, it was a great weekend in college football. Um, unranked Memphis took care of business against Old Miss. Utah State. Uh, kind of handled Boise State this weekend. Um, there's a great finish uh, at the Big House uh, in Ann Arbor, but we'll talk about that a, a little bit later. Um, yeah, overall, just I mean, a, a little bit of an odd weekend, but uh, very exciting and almost surreal, surreal set of games. There, there's no really other way to to put it than, than surreal. You can just be watching just about anything. So we've been touching on college football. That would be like our first topic, I'd say. What do you guys have on the, the week in college football? Well, last week there was a 30 for 30 on ESPN, which talked about the USC days and talking about the fall of that. And one of the games they showed was against USC when Matt Leinart was pushed by Reggie Bush, which calling it an illegal play. And that Saturday there was an article saying that October 15, 2005 was the best weekend in college football history. And moving forward 10 years ago to this day, it might have topped it. Mm -hmm. Just look at the top 10 right now. It's not your grandfather's top 10. Ohio State number one, yeah, that's probably, probably predicted. Mm -hmm. But number two is TCU, number three Utah. Just, just unreal. And then after the 2.30 game, which Michigan State and Michigan, there was a play, the Mad Hatter, Les Miles, throws a fake field goal, which, which makes LSU beat Florida, both teams undefeated at the time. You could watch college football from 8 a.m. to about midnight and not be, entertain and be not entertained. Yeah, so Memphis uh, continued their 13-game win streak this weekend. Um, that's dating back to last year. Um, they're probably the only team in the, uh, that's not in the Power Five conferences that, uh, that I mean, that put themselves on the map. I mean, they, they just handled an old Miss team that was previously ranked 13. And their quarterback is a, he's a prototypical NFL quarterback. He's six foot seven, 245 pounds. Um, Paxton Lynch had a great game. He threw for over 300 yards, three touchdowns, and uh, a couple weeks back he threw for over 400 against Cincinnati. So he's really, he's really excelling in the spotlight that they've, uh, they've kind of just grabbed, you know, because otherwise, like, nobody would be really paying attention to Memphis. They're a basketball school. And move, moving back ago to 10 years ago, 
that that weekend, which happened where Michigan beat Penn State. There was only three national title runners at that time, which Penn State was knocked off that weekend, but pretty much everybody knew it was going to be Texas and USC. Talking about the madness of, of this, 10 years from now, there's probably at least still 15 teams that can say they have a legitimate shot going into the college football playoff. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll bring our predictions a little bit later. Yeah. Well, you can't talk about or you can't talk about college football this week without talking about the unbelievable finish uh, Michigan Michigan State game. Was that the craziest play in college football history? Um, I would I would argue that it's if, if it's not the craziest play, it's top three. You know, it was an amazing finish and um, as a native of East Lansing and a lifelong Spartan, it was one of the craziest weekends that you know I've ever experienced. Um, the University of Michigan rivalry is is really heated. There's a lot of bad blood. They've been playing for over a century. And um, in front of 107,000 strong in the big house, Michigan State took care of business. And, you know, it, it, w it was miraculous. You know, there's, there's no other explain like, there's no other way to describe what happened. Like, ESPN, uh, ESPN rated the, the Spartans' win percentage prior to that final play and put that at 0.02%. Meaning, I mean, it was one of the most unlikely things that you could ever see. Like, it, if anything changes that game is you know the game's over mm -hmm. like Michigan State sent 11 I mean all he had to do was get the get the punt off but there's a there's a botched snap and it just you know it happens to fall right for the Spartans um, and leading up to the game just to show how he did it uh, how he did the rivalry is uh, most years there's you know a little bit of vandalism uh, this year they the Michigan fans spray painted a Magic Johnson sta uh, statue maize and blue and uh, I mean, as well as doing a bunch of other uh, other stuff on campus, but it just kind of shows that like the game is a is a dividing line within the state. Like you, you know, you have to pick a side, mm -hmm. and it was one of the craziest plays I think I'll ever see in my lifetime. Definitely in in your lifetime for sure. Of course, the play that everybody thought before was the Alabama Auburn play, the kick six, where Auburn basically gave themselves a chance to go to the national championship game. Now the dynamics of that play where the kicker turner sits in the back of the end zone and then runs it back. That happened previously before in college football and the NFL, of course. Uh, the Chicago Bear, former Atlanta Falcon, Devin Hester, made that famous. So it's something that we got to be reminded of. But that punt, there is no way to put it then. I can't believe what I just saw, <laughs> similar to maybe Cap. Cal Stanford, yeah. of course, that's the famous call by Al Michaels, but that, that one for sure was the most unpredictable and craziness, and just to top off our, our crazy week of sports, and just, just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Words really can't describe it. So then moving on, what are you guys' predictions for the Final Four in college football? Like right now, do you think it's going to be jumbled up, or do you think the usual suspects are going to stay at the top? Um, I'd say there's a, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of mix. Like uh, I would still have OS, uh, Ohio State at one. Um, Baylor and TCU have been taking care of business. I really like what I saw from LSU this weekend, um, knocking off Florida. That was a big matchup. And even Alabama, who's lost earlier in the season, came out and you know like took care of business. And like if there's a team that that I believe could could do well starting off slow, it would be Nick Saban and Alabama. Without a doubt, I'll have to agree with you there, my friend. Alabama, an early loss is best. I have actually have them sneaking in like they did in the previous year. And number two, I'm going to say after that magical play, I know as a, as a relative, a, a native of East Lansing, I'm going to give Michigan State that number two spot. There's always a Big Ten team that will sneak up in this playoffs. I'm a firm believer of that. Number three, I'm going to go with the winner of TCU Baylor, who are playing in the first weekend in November. I give TCU the edge in that one as well. And then number four, I'm going with the dark horse. There's a term in college football called Clemsoning, and where Clemsoning <laughs> is where you have a good team that has a lot of potential 
where the one year they had Sammy Watkins, DeAndre Hopkins mm -hmm. on the yeah. same team and probably lost two or three times. This year, head coach Dabo Sweeney really has this team believing. Their toughest road is Florida State, but if they get past that, I can see them going into the playoffs as well. And look out, my dark horse for this year, too, is the Iowa Hawkeyes. They're sitting at number 12 right now, have an easy schedule to go the way out. That hard-nosed team might knock off either Ohio State or Michigan State going on into the year. So watch out for them. Yeah. I have a pretty, pretty bold top four for me. Um, I said TCU, Ohio State, Utah, and Iowa, which you were talking, you guys kind of touched on Iowa. Ohio State, I think they can still, like, stay at the top as they usually do. Um, Utah has been absolutely incredible this year, I think. I think that they'll, they'll stay at the top, uh, at least the top three. Um, and then TCU, well. Real quick, Utah at number three. I don't yeah. see them don't going see out. Well, let's take a look at this week's Perfect Pets at the Cooley Region Humane Society. My name is Sissy. I'm a Yorkshire Terrier. I may be 11 years old, but my cuteness makes up for it. The name is Hollows. What you see is what you get. Hi, my name is Flash, and I'm a handsome six-year-old border collie with very good manners, and I need a home. Hey, I'm Warren. I've only been in this world for eight weeks, but I'm sure that one of these days my future family is going to come and take me home. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. And once again, the number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014, 781-4014. Well, we can move on now. We talked a lot about what went on in the nation. We got to keep it to the great Badger State in the state of Wisconsin. This college football year, unpredictable, and the same goes in Madison, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. A Badgers team known for running and grounding and pounding is now a team with a halfway decent aerial attack. They beat Purdue 24-7 to on Saturday. What do you guys think of this Badger team so far right now, sitting at 5-2 and two in the Big Ten? Well, I think coming into it, like people, a lot of fans didn't know what to expect. I mean, Paul Christ is a, you know, he's starting his, his tenure off at, uh, at UW, and a lot of the times transitions for coaches aren't exactly smooth. Like, he has to come in and get his own personnel, and this is a drastically different team than we've seen most years. Like, the, the offensive line, which is historically a great strength, has, you know, has been a, like, a weakness this year. Like, they, they've, they struggled a lot, and that's not something that we're used to seeing as fans, so it's, it's a little different, but I, I like what I've seen so far. Definitely going through changes, I would say. Well, it wouldn't be a Wisconsin football game without a Joel Stavi interception, I always say. Um, he was 30 for 39 with 322 yards and a pick. But oh, like you were saying, the aerial attack really has been stronger this year. And we haven't had to rely on the run. Only 96 total rush yards. I think our, our most that like, Odenwale had was like 20-something or 30-something yards. And but, there is rumors that Corey Clement is going to get yes. the next five games in. So that's definitely a lot of positive things for the Badgers to see. And plus, with not having some stars, there's been a lot of, say, B celebrities on the Badgers mm -hmm. that have been going up. And to talk about the other side of the ball, they won't let anybody get yards against them besides seven points a game. Chris or TJ Edwards have that defense locked down for the next three or four years. All right, well, moving on, our next topic is staying in the state, Wisconsin. We had the Packers versus Chargers. Um, Packers improved to 6-0. and What do you guys take away from the game? Uh, I, I've got sympathy for, for uh, Phillip Rivers. He threw for over 500 yards, no mm -hmm. picks, and still comes up with a loss. But, you know, unfortunately he was playing Green Bay, and that's, you know, never an easy task. And um, I really like what I've seen from Green Bay so far. I mean, I'd like to see, like, Lacey, obviously, come back to form, but uh, Starks played amazingly. I give credit to Phillip Rivers as well, throwing for over 500 yards as well. But 
The Packers will let a quarterback throw for about a month of those yards as long as they get a turnover or two. Clay Matthews rocks Melvin Gordon the first quarter, making that run game all but inevitable that they'll have to use a passing game and then plus they made one big play on fourth down that's all it takes dom capers will let a defense or a an opposing offense nickel and dime that defense to death to death but in the end of the day as long as somebody go goes and makes a play that that's what that defense is all about getting a turnover or two per game and yeah. and you give don't the, break mentality yep. you give that defense a chance or two to get a ball for Aaron Rodgers, who is honestly one of the probably the best quarterbacks you'll ever see come out of Green Bay. I don't, I can't imagine having a quarterback that doesn't doesn't perform as as you can see before. I've never had a bad quarterback in my life besides maybe a substitute or two when Rodgers was hurt. But anyhow, yeah. there's been a lot of surprises in the NFL this year. What is your favorite one then so far? I really, really like seeing the Seahawks fail after. I know you're wearing this shirt, the, the famous blown call on the uh, fail Mary, but they're 2-4 and four this season. They're tied for third in the NFC West with the 49ers, who have also been abysmal, but that's a little bit of a different story. Also, another talking point would be the Bills. Everyone saw at, thought after they just destroyed Miami earlier in the season, uh, they won 41-14. They thought the Bills were going to be real contenders this year, but right now they're sitting at 3-3 three and three and really have not been the team that everyone was hoping they would be this year. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a, of a homer point, but um, I'm disappointed to see what the Lions have done so far. Um, on a more positive note, uh, like some players have come out of nowhere. Freeman has been outstanding. Like I, mm -hmm. I clearly didn't see it coming. I don't know about about you guys I do have them in a fantasy league but that's beyond the point the Falcons right now sitting pretty at four and one for sure and there's five undefeated teams in the NFL right now but some of those teams I'm not worried about playing I know the Broncos have a good defense Packers go there in two weeks I think the Packers win by two touchdowns there yeah. but it's not about the undefeated teams right now I think that are scary the three and three Eagles are, are scary I don't want them showing up to Lambeau in January Another team that looks really scary is the Minnesota Vikings right now. They, even though AP hasn't been on his game, they have a defense that can swarm around. Adversity in the NFL is almost at, at its greatest as far as a, any given Sunday. And it seems to just match, match that mentality every single year. And an undefeated team might not right now might not win, win the Super Bowl. It might be the 3-3 three and three Eagles who survive in the East or – or another team somewhere else but well as we keep moving on we'll be going across the pond sorry starting to talk about uh, soccer over in Europe right now as we touched on before uh, the Barclays Premier League in England is just all mixed up uh, with all the teams uh, Chelsea who's been a perennial candidate for uh, winning the title is sitting at 12th this year or this week um, Manchester City Arsenal and Man United all um, up top. Manchester City have looked absolutely, absolutely unstoppable uh, this year, which is as to be expected. They got, I think, second last year. Arsenal wants to think it's this, or this year is their year. Um, I don't see them winning the title, however. My team, Manchester United, right now, City, uh, they're last, week, or last year at this point, they were eighth place, so a huge improvement. They also look like they could uh, challenge Manchester City for the title. And then in fourth place, we have uh, West Ham, who are definitely a surprise up in the top four, but not really sure if they can keep it up. Like I said, uh, Liverpool is sitting in 10th, Chelsea in 12th, which are not places that you expect them to be this year. Uh, rounding out number five and six are Leicester City at fifth and Crystal Palace at sixth, who last year were at uh, 16th and 17th place, respectively. Uh, moving over to Germany, um, in the Bundesliga, Bayern also been unstoppable. They're nine, they have nine wins in nine games with 27 points sitting at the top. Um, Borussia Dortmund are in second place with 20 points. And then rounding out are Schalke and Wolfsburg, who really, that, those are the only four teams I can see having any sort of uh, challenge to, to Bayern Munich. And lastly, over in La Liga in Spain, um, it's just as mixed up as uh, the Premier League is. Real Madrid, Celta Vigo, and Barcelona all have 18 points. 
Uh, Real Madrid's on top of the league with goal differential. And then following that is Atletico Madrid and Villarreal. Um, Nets through eight, game, eight games. Madrid and Vill Villarreal have 16 points. Um, it's not going to be a two-team race in La Liga this year. So what else do we got? Uh, well, moving on to the, the NBA. NBA preview. Yep. Yep. Well, the, the NBA starts next week. The Bucks have their first home game next Wednesday, the first time they'll open up at home in about 10 to 15 years. And what a time for, for them to open up. And it's something, again, to not forget about with all the other sports going on. The, just the energy around that team right now is just phenomenal. Excited to see the young nucleus, the new jerseys, the new court. They are even the first NBA team to have a alternate court being used in four to five games this year. They even have alternate announcers for 20 to 30 games. Just the excitement around that city of Milwaukee is great, but they have some tough competition in that central division in the Eastern Conference, but I can see the Bucks pulling out to be a team starting to be 22-8. and eight. Is there a preseason favorite f for you guys as far as the NBA, or are you sticking on the Bucks bandwagon? Well, I said I made a bold prediction uh, when they drafted Jabari Parker, calling a 2017 Bucks NBA Finals, but we'll see how that goes. We have a healthy Jabari Parker, like I said, this year. Giannis has looked incredible in preseason, as well as towards the tail end of last year. I thought he looked really, really good. And Greg Monroe, the new pickup. Um, and like you were saying, just the energy that surrounds the team this year is just, it's really, really exciting to be a part of it. And just, they, they look like they're going to be contenders this year, at least for the playoffs. The yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, I can't wait to see Greg Monroe uh, mm -hmm. in the Bucks offense. Um, I often felt like he was underutilized in Detroit. He, you know, he was overshadowed by Andre Drummond, the... The paint was just, you know, a really packed place, and I feel like with a little bit more space, he'll have he'll have a time to flourish. And I thought being a Packers fan was un unfair f for these. The Bucks in a few years, they might be an unfair team to follow in the NBA as well. Jump on the bandwagon, folks. Well, let's take a look at what we have going on at WMCM. We have a brand new show called Eagle Nation. Let's take a look. Hey, Eagle fans. WMCM TV has a brand new sports show. That's right. Join us every Monday and Friday to keep up to date with all the Eagle athletics. We'll recap highlights, talk to coaches and players, and keep you up to date on what's happening around campus. Pretty cool, right? The show that I'm talking about is Eagle Nation. So join the crew every Monday and Friday at 12 p.m. to talk about UWL athletics. When you think of sports, Think of us, Eagle Nation, on WMCM TV. All right, now time for some odds and ends in the sports world, a few other things. Um, of course, MLB playoffs are in full swing right now. Almost time for the World Series. Tonight we have uh, Game 4 between the Royals and Blue Jays. Uh, Kansas City is up 2-1 in that series. And Game 3 between the Mets and Cubs. And Mets, of course, are up 0-2. Um, who do you guys got for the World Series? Uh, my heart says uh, Chicago. I, I want to see the Cubs finally, the Cubs fans finally enjoy something. You know, as, as a Lions fan, I know what it's like to be dedicated to a team that, that struggles and, you know, often lets you down. So I, I would definitely like to see that happen. I, I don't know at this point that that's going to, but it would be nice. I've seen a team team come down from 2-0 before in a series. There's no reason for Cubs fans to, to panic ish just yet. They have three games at Wrigley in three consecutive days. They're, they're in pretty decent shape there. But on the other hand, Daniel Murphy, the name you know what? The name Murphy has been a thorn in the Cubs' sides for years. The owner of the Billy Goat was named Murphy. Um, there was a Murphy on the 1984 Mets that it was a manager, actually. Mm -hmm. And now Daniel Murphy has been destroying the Cubs, so who knows if Murphy will be on the side of them. But I'm going to go on the other side. Even though I don't like what goes on in the AL with a designated hitter year after year, I would love to see the Kansas City Royals go complete their destiny and win a World Series. I've gotten over my sour grapes relationship with Ned Yost. <laughs> if he got a team with a lot of prospects uh, on that team besides say say Ricky Weeks or, or so he has a, a lot of 
former Brewers like Kane and Escobar playing really well there. I'm I'm over that. I would love to see Ned Yost ride high and win a World Series ring. I well, uh, moving on now to uh, UWL Sports. Joey, I know you have a lot of information surrounding the teams on campus. so Sure, and you know, for, as an Eagle, you got to back your school. And there's a lot of exciting things going on in the world of UWL athletics right now. The football team is the first thing that I'd say a lot of college students back when they say, for college sports, right? Mm -hmm. The football is probably the most popular. They're two and four right now, but they have a lot of winnable games left on their schedule. They play Eau Claire this Saturday, and they have games that they can play well, and they've competed against teams like Stevens Point or Platteville, teams big in the WIEC before. But moving on from football, the volleyball team right now is 16 and eight and three, one of the conference, one of their best starts to a season in years and then also the soccer team right now is 12 and 3 and they haven't lost since September 19th we, we should try to find a time to go and get behind these Eagles that are playing because we have a lot of great athletes on on this campus that are, are doing great things for our university so mm -hmm. I, I, I'll say my message to get behind get behind our Eagles definitely well Going on from that, I'd say like definitely exciting to have teams that are um, looking like not not necessarily contenders, but teams that will be getting wins. So I'm excited as a as a student to be watching some of these play, or some of these teams. Uh, moving on to more more local, uh, we have the WIA playoffs for football starting very soon. Um, John, you're a coach over at Logan. Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to work with uh, Coach Noble and Coach Harney this season at, uh, at Logan and the rest of the coaching staff. And um, we're a two seed going into the playoffs, playing Madison Edgewood this Friday night. Um, and around the Cooley region, we've seen, we've seen some great football. On Alaska's a six seed. West Salem's in the same bracket. Toma in Division Two is, is, uh, is doing pretty well. And, you know, it's nice to see our area represented in the, you know, in the state race. You know, like, the, the Cooley region needs to be seen. W without a doubt, for sure. I'm going to go a little bit, a little bit, excuse me, east. And my alma mater, Union Grove, they go into the playoffs this year have a seventh seed, but it's their first year that they've made the playoffs in 2009. And as a Bronco graduating from 2012, I am excited to see that. I remember how fun it was to go follow the football team when they were in the playoffs uh, back in the day. And also, I'll have to get a little bit of love for um, – a Badger Alex Erickson's team, the Darlington Redbirds. Um, they lost in the state title game last year in D5, and they're poised to make another state run. And also, there's a lot of great recruits this year in the state of Wisconsin that Paul Chris should be watching. Guys like Cole Van Lannan from Bayport, who yeah. was Alex Ingold's teammate. And then also another teammate on the team, Luke Benchwell from Grafton, Wisconsin, an inside linebacker that I'm excited to see at Wisconsin. Even if he has to walk on, I think he'll be there someday soon. A lot of great talent in the state this year, which sometimes isn't the case. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm, I'm excited to see, and good luck to Logan as well. Thank you. Yeah, I'm jealous of you guys as my hometown New London Bulldogs completed yet another abysmal year, if I can call it that. Well, hopefully things will be looking up in the future, though, but that's all I got. All right. Well, on to, like, some FaceTime. I know we all have rants and raves that we want, so... Um, what I have is uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, 30, year, 30 years old. He just surpassed Raul as the top goal scorer of all time for Real Madrid. 324 goals in 310 games as opposed to Raul's 323. And it took him 741 games, Raul. So we're watching one of the best ever, as well as Manchester United. 3-0 win over Everton this weekend. They're looking wonderful this year. I can't wait to see what the rest of the season holds. Well, summertime in Wisconsin means county fairs, apple pie, and Northwoods League baseball. I got the honor to work for the Northwoods League champion and on Monday announced as Northwoods League Organization of the Year, Kenosha Kingfish, out there in Kenosha. And uh, general manager Jake McGee really has, in two years, turned that Simmons Field upside down. They have about 28 people show up at night. I got to say congratulations to that, and I am very proud to be a kingfish. Okay, and I just want to say big ups to the to the Big Ten. You know, taking back a little bit of 
a little bit of resp uh, respect. I know the SEC, you know, over the last decade has gotten, you know, mostly attention when it comes to, to big-time football. But Ohio State's, you know, taking care of business towards the top. Michigan State's doing amazing things. And even even uh, the, the, the mid-level, not, not mid-level teams, but the teams that aren't necessarily going to win a conference title are doing big things. Like, you know, who knows how the season's going to end. Iowa's doing, you know, crazy things. Well, that's just about all we have. Uh, this was Sports Talk Live with Colin, John, and Joey. Thanks for watching. Go Rangers. <laughs>